Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And we have an especially exciting one for you today. What are we talking about, Jake? We just released a new product. Well, a whole host of new products, but the big one that we're focusing on today is Shaper Studio. Love Shaper Studio. Uh, it's our simplified design tool for craftspeople. We've gone over it on a couple of shows already at this point, but we're going to use it to make a pretty cool project today. We needed a new cleat for our Japanese pole saws. That's right behind me over here. So we're going to walk through this start to finish. How, you how do you design a part like that or a project like that in Shaper Studio? Yeah, so we're going to be doing all kinds of shape shifting. Mm -hmm. It's going to get be real positioning. exciting. Positioning, we're going to be planning and reviewing all on the computer so that when we get to that router, it's going to be as quick and seamless as possible. Yep. Now, if you've seen these shows before, you know what we do. We're going to do about an hour of live demonstration. We're going to teach you some things about Shaper Origin and Shaper Studio today. And then at the end, if you're watching live, we're going to do a live question and answer. And we've got some great giveaways for you today. We've got new products to yeah. give away so jake glossed over this we're give, we're we're launching six new products today shaper studio is the flagship um but we've got new router bits we've got some collets we've got some tape we'll tell you all about that in a minute we're giving some of that stuff away we're giving away a studio subscription hang on to the end of the show and we'll get that to you all right and you know the drill but if you don't Make sure to answer the question at the bottom of your screen to put your name in the running. Mm -hmm. What are you excited to design with Studio first? And if you don't have an idea of that, hopefully you'll have one by the end of the show. And uh, yeah, ans ask all your questions in the comments below. We've got Shaper Ted in the comments answering questions live. And any questions that are a little more complex or that warrant a demonstration will show at the end of the show. Um, yeah. We know that digital design is yes. difficult, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, so difficult that we used to do it for you. Uh, <laughs> but we're hoping to teach the people to fish on this one and uh, give you a simplified digital design tool that helps you get your ideas out into the world quickly and easily. Yeah. And we'll show you how to do that today. Just um, the things you need, none of the fluff that you don't. Yeah. Before we get too deep into it, I do want to review all the new stuff yeah. that we're launching today we've got it all laid out here so uh let's go like let's build the hype right simplest to in my opinion coolest like these are all great things but we're going to start with the one inch double-sided tape yeah so same stuff that you know and love we still sell in a two inch roll we mm -hmm. now sell in a one inch a little bit narrower for those precise applications yeah all right next We've got a 90 degree engraving bit, and we've used this one on the show a couple of times before. Why don't we show this off on the Origin cam? Yes, so as you know, the tool Origin comes with a 60 degree engraving bit. This is a 90, so it is perfect for doing countersinks, countersinking holes. Mm -hmm. It's great for doing um, a different types of sign engraving. If mm -hmm. you're doing, what is it called when you're cutting die bond or do you yeah, want to fold it into a it. box? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool stuff. We have a quarter inch by one and a half inch long O flute router bit. And what this is really good for is soft things, plastics and foams. If you're doing any Sys1 customization out there, this cutter is going to be awesome for that. Uh, nice deep passes and great cuts, uh, sharp cuts in foam. You see how long that, <laughs> that yeah. length of cut is? Yeah, super good. And then for a little bit more short and stubby, we've got the five millimeter uh, by 20 millimeter cutting length O flute router bit. We're going to use this one today. This is one of the things we're giving away. We're trying to build the hype. And uh, so this is a good one. This is one of our favorites. We're going to give away one of those five millimeter router bits at the end of the show. And we're also going to give away something new that y'all have been asking for basically every show for the last five months a standalone eight millimeter collet. So let's show that off. I think everybody who's watching this knows what this is already, but this is going to let you hold those 8 millimeter shank tools, which is the largest diameter that Origin accepts in your router spindle. Super exciting. So you can use those big roughing router bits or long fluted router bits um, without having to buy the whole kit. If you don't need the whole kit, just get the big one. It's great. Uh, and then last but not least, Shaper Studio. So we'll talk all about that today. Speaking of, why don't we just dive in? Let's do it. 
So I want to give you all a little bit of an overview on Studio. Uh, we've done this before, so it's going to be kind of quick, but I want to show you everything that you can do in here in like a quick five minutes, and then we'll dive into this deep design project. So Goose, why don't we pull up my screen here? This is Shaper Studio. And Jake, please interject and tell me whenever I forget something. OK. Um, what if it's just like a witty, witty banter? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Love witty banter. This is our design canvas, this blank white screen here. And we can add all kinds of things to that. First off, we've got Find Art. If I click on this and search for something, it's going to give me 2D vector graphics that I can use to cut with origin. So what do we want to search for? What do you think about a saw? A saw? Love a saw. So we just search for saw. And we've got all these saw graphics that we can click and drop on the screen, for example, if you wanted to do an engraving. We're not going to use that today, so we'll get rid of that. Just want to show you that it's possible. We're going to use a lot of this today, make shape. So we've got all of these uh, pretty basic geometric shapes, circles, ellipses, rectangles, rounded rectangles, and then polygons, which can be any number of sides from three up to a zillion. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, you can drop these shapes on your canvas. These are, you'll see there's a little bit of overlap between these shapes and the shapes that you can make with on tool CAD on origin, but that is expanded functionality there. So for example, we could drop a polygon here. Let's say we want eight sides instead of five. There you go. We've got an octagon. If you're making, for example, an octagonal box, we'll make a lot of shapes today. We've got add text so let's say we want to make a sign that says shaper sessions we can place that we can go in and edit and unlike on tool text we've got a whole selection of fonts here everything from braille to nice hand scripts we've got a creepy font for halloween coming up here we've got some nice tasteful sans serif fonts Let's go with this grand hotel. Beautiful. Look at that. So we've got fonts for sign makers, especially out there, engravers, customization. Uh, let's delete that because we're not using that today. And then last but not least, as far as getting things on the canvas here, we can import files. And you can import those files, SVG or DXF, from your computer. Or this is new. You can import those directly from My Files, which is a new functionality on Shaper Hub. That lets you remix files that you have made or that exist out there in the world on Shaper Hub. So we're going to show you how to do that in today's show also. That's how you get things on the canvas. We've got three modes here. We've got design mode. We've got plan mode. We've got review mode. Let's actually get something back on the canvas here so we can see how those work. Just a simple polygon is going to be good. Design mode allows you to plan your cuts, and we'll go into this in depth today. Uh, for example, this is pre-programmed as an outside cut on this pentagon. We could change that to an inside cut. We could change that to a pocket cut. Um, you can assign depths, offsets, bit diameters that help you review and anticipate in advance what things are going to look like. And then when you go to review mode, there you go. You can see that pentagon and an approximation of what it's going to look like on your piece of wood in three dimensions. Yeah. This this whole plan and review step is huge because how many times you've been sitting designing something and not quite sure if your eight your eighth inch bit or a quarter inch bit's gonna fit between two things, mm -hmm. being able to just test it before you go over the tool mm -hmm. is enormous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through all of that. So today we're going to make this French cleat. Let's actually pull it down off the wall here. Watch yourself. Dangerous because we got some sharp things. But we'll put these saws to the side and we can just look at how we put this together. We have two sides that are mirrored. That's going to be pretty fun. We'll do that in studio. And then we've got a top that fits with both of these pieces. So I think you've got the bench cam, Jake. Let's show this off on the bench cam Yeah. a little bit tighter in. We'll be doing nice, what are those called, rabbit joints? Is that what those are? Yeah, rabbits. But being able to assign these as pockets, these mm -hmm. as through cuts, 
And we can combine all of this into just one shape too with Shapeshifter, something that you can't do on Origins on ToolCAD that we'll walk you through today also. So anybody who's got questions on Shapeshifter, this is a brand new product. We just launched it publicly on Tuesday. That's two days ago. Um, we're going to have a lot of questions. We've gotten a lot of questions already on Shapeshifter. So that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this show was to really dive deep into that. How do you make those shapes, take those simple shapes, combine them into a more complex shape like the side profile of this French cleat? Yeah, it's a new way of thinking, using shapes as essentially cutting tools mm -hmm. or to build them and, and mm -hmm. you know, add them together. Yeah, adding and subtracting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So did I miss anything? What do you say we get started on Let's this? Let's get started. Cleat. French cleats. For those of you that don't know, we're like, we like French cleats here. Uh, yeah, this is our cleat wall. <laughs> this is like a third of our total cleat wall storage. We've got a whole bunch more storage over there. We should do a shop tour one of these shows. That would be a lot of fun. The uh, the the thing to say around here is just put a cleat on it. If you get a new tool, put a cleat on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I've got a lot of this drawn out from before, so I'm going to be looking over at the whiteboard a lot uh, just to make sure that I've got my dimensions right. You can use Studio to sketch and do this stuff kind of iteratively. Uh, I did want to get the dimensions right for the show, though, because we're doing it live. So I planned this one out, but we are going to teach you guys how to get all this on the canvas. So... Goose, back to the laptop, if you don't mind. First things first, we're going to name our file. There's a couple of different ways to do that. I could simply click here and rename, or I could click this main menu, come in here, rename, and we're going to call this pull saw cleat. Perfect, and that's going to be for our Japanese pull saws. You'll notice there's a lot of other stuff we can do here. I can move this or uh, rearrange it in my files. I could download it to the computer. If you don't have Wi-Fi in your shop, you might want to sync over USB rather than over Wi-Fi. Something cool that we're going to show today is every file that you generate in Studio, if you have a Shaper Origin, is going to automatically sync not just to your files in Shaper Hub, but it's also going to automatically sync to your Shaper Origin. So you're ready to cook immediately. We've got a button here to create a new design, which I did before the show. We've got our recents, which I've been working on. And then later, once we create this file, we'll go check it out in My Files. We've also got links here to Shaper Hub, the forum, anywhere that you would need to go. So we've got our pull saw cleat file named. Now, um, I'm going to make this kind of complex French cleat shape, but the way to think about it for starters is that it's based on a rectangle. And that rectangle is five and a half inches tall. I know this just because I've made a few cleats in my day. And let's make that two inches wide. There we go. And five and a half inches tall. You can scroll to zoom and you can click to pan. So perfect, that's my rectangle right there. I'm gonna X out and I'm done with that rectangle. Now what I wanna do that I haven't, uh, that's gonna be the shape shifty part is I wanna subtract that shape that is the angled uh, hook there for the French cleat. So I'm gonna make a rectangle that's going to subtract that shape, and then I'm going to make a, a different angled shape that's going to make uh, the 45 degree bit plus a little bit of clearance. So let's make another rectangle here, and that's going to be one inch wide, which it is, and three inches tall. Okay, and now what you'll see here is snapping. This is really cool. This is snapping to the edge of this rectangle. It'll also snap over here, It'll snap over here. It'll snap at those corners or intersections. Um, but I want this rectangle to be in a specific position. I want the bottom of this rectangle to be one inch from the bottom of my design. And you'll notice that there's no way to do that on screen yet. That's because I have to activate position. Bam, there's my grid. So this is a lot like Origin, where you create a grid on a workspace, and you can position shapes within that grid. So now I've got this grid. I'm going to turn off snapping to grid because I don't want to be snapping to too much at once. I've got my grid on one inch spacing. That's awesome. So now I'm going to position all this in reference to that grid. I can edit this and now you can see that position option pops up here. I'm going to change this anchor to the lower left. 
and now I can position that lower left at zero, zero. Awesome. Come back over here, change the anchor of this shape to that lower left, and I'm going to position that at x equals zero, y equals one. That's an important thing I just want to drive home again, making sure that you're grabbing that correct anchor point. Because mm -hmm. originally it's going to assume that you want that center point. So for things like this, bottom left, just like on Origin, often mm -hmm. we care more about bottom left or bottom right mm -hmm. than we do center. Yeah, I like working with the corners. If I knew, if I wanted to do that mental math of how tall that rectangle was and add that in my head, then I could do that in my head. But I like being able to just know that I want that bottom left corner one inch from that zero, zero point. So that's why I'm working off the bottom left here. Okay, so we've got that shape. Let's go back to the screen. Now I need this clearance over here for my router bit to get that nice corner and a 45 degree little bit. So I'm going to make a rounded rectangle for this one. Let's do that. And uh, let's see, I want this to be only, uh, let's say 0.26 inches wide so I could fit a quarter inch router bit in there cleanly. I want that to be, let's make that two inches long just for the sake of demonstration. And this is all going to come together like very quickly here. It might not seem like I'm doing anything important, but with that rotation, now I can take this shape, I can drag it over here into that corner. It doesn't really need to snap to anything. It just needs to give me that corner clearance. And now you can see that I've got this clearance here for my router bit. And I've got this little 45 degree hook over here. And now this might blow everyone's mind. I'm going to click and hold to drag and select all. That's mind blowing, but not the real mind blowing part. Now I'm going to go over here to shape shifter, click that. And I'm just going to click on the shapes that I want to keep. So I'm going to click here and there, make shape. And now there is my French cleat profile. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So um, that was a, a subtractive example. We got a question on the forums today. Can I do additive uh, operations with Shapeshifter also, not just subtractive? And yes, absolutely you can. So let's say this is, this is a very, uh, this is a pretty random example, but let's say that I wanted to round the bottom of this cleat off. I want to put a two inch diameter circle there to match the bottom of my cleat. I'm gonna drag it to line up right there with the center bottom. Now there's really no reason you would ever want to do this. This is just an example of adding something using Shapeshifter. I'm gonna select both of those again. Oop, not duplicate. You can always undo, that's nice. You can infinite undo on here. It's not like you can only undo 10 times. You can undo all the way back to the beginning of your design. I'm going to hit shape shifter and now I'm going to add those shapes, all those shapes, make shape, and now I've added that round bit to the bottom. Another option that you have, if you select all these shapes and go into shape shifter, is keep existing shapes. So this will add the shapes together and keep your existing shapes. So now I'll make that shape. Okay, great. So I've got this shape. I'm going to drag that over here. I still have my original fundamental shapes. How cool is that? We're still working with this basic cleat profile here. So I'm going to delete this shape. I'm going to delete this shape. And we're right back to where we were a minute ago. Do I need to reiterate any of that, Jake? Do you think that's pretty solid? I think it's solid. I think undo. Remember, that's... Always a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, if you guys have any questions, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of questions about mm -hmm. this. We're here to mm -hmm. demo your questions specifically. We just need to know what they are. So ask those questions in the chat below. And if there's a question that needs to be demoed, Ted will send it to us. All right. There we go. So back on the screen here, we need to add that rabbit at the top so we get that rabbit joint. I'm going to make another shape. I'm going to make a rectangle. Now it's important for this to have some overlap on the sides so that my router bit clears the whole thing and I don't get any uh, unused corners. 
So I'm going to make that two and a quarter by 0.5 inches wide. And here we go. Let's drag that center top. So I've got a nice rabbit right there, able to be cleared out with a quarter inch router bit. And that overhang is going to allow the full diameter of the router bit to clear out those corners. But with this rabbit, I've made this a sided part, right? There's going to be a left side and a right side. So how do I get a right side out of this or a left side, whichever side is left, without having to redraw the whole thing? I can select all. I can duplicate, and I'm going to show you guys a little trick. I'm going to drag this over here so that it's out of the way. It's snapped. That's nice. Um, so everything's lined up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this handle. Now watch me drag this. Oh, here we go. Watch me drag this to the other side. Look at that. That's mirrored. Now I can go back in here, and I want that to match the other part, which is 2.25 inches wide in total. There we go. That's two parts. And they've got about an inch between them. Um, I can bump them a little closer. It doesn't really matter exactly how close they are. I just know that I need to fit about a quarter inch router bit in there. So I can just use my arrow keys. You can't see me tapping that arrow key. But I can use that arrow key. And you can see the position updating on the right over there as I move this around. Um, and I can just bump it so that it's approximately where there's some clearance between the two parts, but it's nice and tight so I'm not wasting material. It does look like I did not select both of those. Uh, oh boy, and that's a lot of undos, but I could undo that whole thing. The other thing that I could do is just take this and re-snap it right there, top center. And now if I really wanted to do that the right way, I'd select all, there we go. And now that arrow key moves everything right together. I think that's what you're pointing at, Jake. You yeah. pointed at something kind of surreptitiously. <laughs> oh, it's like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Stop the presses. I knew it's not all get going it. together. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I took a couple of detours, but we're there. So that's two parts. Quick note on selecting. So we're, mm -hmm. we're on desktop right now. It mm -hmm. should be noted that you can use Studio on your phone, on your smartphone, on your mm -hmm. tablet. Yeah. Um, and at least I know on iPads. Or yeah. iPhones, a select all feature. This is for any browser, any not, browser. Just, uh, not okay. just Apple devices. This is for anything. Uh, Studio works on your browser. So any yeah. device that has the internet and an internet browser uh, with some qualifications, no like, no Netscape 1.0, no ancient stuff, you know, but anything relatively modern, uh, it'll work on and all the features work the same. Yeah, but when you're trying to select all, press your finger down, give it a second, and then drag. So it's kind of a long press drag that allows you to select multiple things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we've got both of the sides of our French cleat here. Uh, now we need that top portion where the saws are going to attach. And we can do some really cool stuff in here to make sure that all of those shapes match, right? So we already know that this piece is two inches wide. Uh, we want our rabbit to uh, match up with kind of a portion on the top that fits, but I want it to also look tasteful, so I'm going to add a little bit of a cutout on the sides also. So I'm going to make a new rectangle, and this re rectangle is going to be bigger. This one's going to be 5 inches wide by 10 inches tall, and that's going to be so that we can fit 6 saws on here. That's great. And again, I just like to just drag stuff around for starters. So I'm going to drag that there. Okay, there we go. And now let's add some little cutouts here. I'm going to get a rounded rectangle. And I just want to make sure that this is plenty big. So it's going to be an inch tall. That's great. And this is overkill, but let's call it five inches wide. Cool. And now I'm going to place that. You can see the snapping happening happening and I just lost it there we go there's that snap so I've used that snap feature to align this kind of tasteful cutout on the side with the end of my cleat so that this portion that's going to be remaining on that top half is uh, is just the exact same width as that cleat rabbit uh, I'm gonna duplicate that object zoom back out and drag that up to the top. 
So we've got that centered with the one below it and centered on the edge. And what I can do is again, shape shift, and this is going to subtract these rectangles, just leaving that shape. That's all I want, make shape. There we go. And if we go back to, let's just uh, take a pit stop here and see what we're working on. We're making this top shape and we've just sliced out these corners here so that it looks a little bit more tasteful when it's on the wall. It's really not important at all, right? It just looks a little bit better. It looks a little more thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Now we need to add those little bits for the saw, for the saws. We're going to make some shapes. We're always making shapes. These are going to be rounded rectangles and to fit the handle of my saw, this needs to be 1.25 inches wide and 0.75 inches tall. Okay, now here's a tricky position um, because this isn't really referenced anywhere. It's at 11.185 inches in the Y direction. I wanna make this somewhere that's got a nice like zero, zero point so that I can, uh, so that I can position all of these saw mortises uh, relative to a to a corner. So I'm going to move this around just temporarily here. I'm going to take that bottom left anchor again and I'm going to place that at X zero and I'm going to place that at Y. Let's just call it six and I can do all my math off of that six number right there. Perfect. Okay and now this based off of uh, some earlier work I know I want this to be 1.25 inches above that bottom left corner, so that puts that at 7.25, okay? And I want that to be at x equals one. So that's set back a little bit, not too far, tastefully far, uh, and I can drop that right there. I'm gonna make another shape. This is going to be for the saw blade, and we're gonna make that, let's make that, uh, let's start with two inches wide and see what happens, and we'll make that 0.26 inches tall again to fit like a like a quarter inch router bit Okay, that looks pretty good And we can take this and drag and just line that up there. This goes to the edge of that rectangle Which is all that we want Whoop, I'm zooming my whole screen I want to zoom just this there we go. We'll leave that so You might think at this point. Hey, we're not done but I want to show you a tip when copying things that's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is go over to plan mode. This would be normally the next step in any design. And you can see that we've got all of these cuts that are programmed in here. And we wanna mix these up so that they're the right thing. So we're gonna change these rabbits to pocket cuts. Let's say that the depth is gonna be a quarter inch. And on both of those, depth, a quarter inch. For these cleats, we want those to be outside cuts. Same for this cleat, outside cut. And we're working with half inch material. I wanna go all the way through, so we're gonna call that a half inch. Same here, we're gonna call that a half inch. Now for this, this piece we're gonna shape shift later, so I'm not going to plan it yet. What I do want to plan so that I can copy it is this pocket. Now this is gonna be a pocket. Now, I've only done this once, so I really hope it works, but I think when I copy this shape, it's gonna copy that cut type. So it's gonna save me time, especially when you're working with bigger designs. You don't wanna copy something and then have to go in plan mode and click, pocket, click, pocket. You can also select multiple things and then change those all to a pocket. But I think it's really handy if you know you're going to do a pattern, then uh, just pick the first object, plan it, and then when you go back to design mode and copy it, it's going to take that with it. So we'll go back to design mode here. I'm going to shift select both of these because I want to duplicate both of them. And I'm going to make six of these, so I'm going to duplicate two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, we'll take these, line them up in that X direction, 
And then in the Y direction, I know that I want to add one and a half inches for every one of these, just because I did the math separately. So this one, that Y is at 7.25. So for these, that's going to be 8.75. OK, so I'm going to line all these up, and then I'll use that position to drop everything where it's supposed to be. And Jake, if you want to say something entertaining while I do this, this is going to be <laughs> a little bit tedious, not to put you on the spot. Oh, it's like my mind immediately went blank the second you did that. <laughs> it's like uh, saying, don't think of a pink elephant, right? I should have said, Jake, don't think of something entertaining to say. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, I j so we've talked about how to select using the drag method, um, but I also see you mm -hmm. using the shift method. Mm -hmm. So holding shift and clicking multiple objects mm -hmm. selects all those objects to be clicked and deselects mm -hmm. too. So that's another tip. Mm -hmm. um, you can use that zero, zero point as kind of your build plate, if you will. So technically you could have moved, like once you got everything set up, you could have moved your cleat parts out of the way and dropped your top part down to zero, zero. Right, and made the math in your head a little bit easier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could have. And then I could have just rearranged everything, which I'm going to, well, I'm not actually going to have to do because I did this better than I did it the first time. That's but right. I am going to rotate everything and rearrange it. So it's, the, so it's the orientation of our stock so that we're not surprised when we get to origin. So yeah, you can always do stuff and then rearrange it. So now I duplicated all of that. When I go into plan mode, let's see if this worked. Oh, no, I think I undid something. Remember mm. when I undid? Mm. It undid the pocket. So you can, this is actually neat, that when you undo things in design mode, it kind of carries over to some things that you can do in plan mode. But we'll just do this uh, multi-select here. So I'm going to select. We'll just do it this way. Yeah. It works, everything works a bunch of different ways. We're going to make those pocket cuts. How easy is that? Uh, you might also think, man, Russ, you're missing a really good shape shift opportunity right here. So what I'm going to do also, because this is all going to make one continuous profile, all of this is going to be to full depth, I'm going to shape shift this. I didn't do that in the practice files, Jake. You didn't. What do you think about that? I like it, but it's not going to give me any room for an offset. It's, oh, it's not going well, to give any room for an offset. You know what we could do. You know what we could do. Here we go. I just did that, but we can undo it. We could take these, and we could make them. We're on that center anchor point, so I could make that 0.3. So how about a uh, 0.025 inch offset? Is that enough for you? Perfect. Okay, so we're going to do 0.3. I don't think that I can do all these at once because it's going to try to resize the whole box, but it's easy enough to do one at a time. Point three. This is the beauty of that flexible, iterative, undo design process. Now I can select these and I could even have just selected the whole thing and still just picked the shapes that I wanted but I'm being picky here so I'm going to shape shift just that make shape beautiful there we go look at that I'll go back over to plan now those are still pockets that's good this is an online cut I'm going to make this an outside cut that's going to go to a half inch and then these are going to go to a quarter inch. And Super. this is for visualization. You know, we're going to go to that review mode. We haven't gone to review mode yet for this, but we're going to go to review mode. And that's going to visualize your design before you commit to cutting it. Because plywood's friggin' expensive these days. <laughs> it really is. I don't even want to say on air how much we paid for our last sheets of plywood. It's embarrassing. <laughs> But so you can go over here into review mode and look at that. We've got our deep cuts. We've got our shallower cuts, which are a lighter color. You can see our rabbits here. You can see that we've got all the clearance that we need. Oh, hey, what's going on here? We better go back to plan mode. I think I, yeah, haha. -ha. Nice. You catch. see that? Yep. See that difference right there? 
So better go back into plan mode. That's what it's for. We're gonna t take just this line. There we go. Make that an outside cut. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now that's way better. That's what that's for. So here's a file. How easy was that? Um, there's no other design software out there that I know we're, yeah, fast. I think, <laughs> oh, I think did, yeah. we're going to try to do two today. We might not have time to do two, but yeah. uh, I will show you how to import this so that you could remix this for your next, for your next design. Um, now, the last thing I know Jake's itching to get cutting, I think is what it is. He's just been sitting here this whole time watching me have all the fun. I am going to show you. I'm going to go to my files. And you can see here that it automatically synchronizes. We've got pull saw cleat right here with all those files. And now the real magic, we just did all of that work on the computer, design, ready to go. Now, Jake, what's that look like on Origin? Uh, let me start off fresh with a new scan. Bring in my workspace here. Mm -hmm. If you're new to Origin and you're wondering what Jake's doing, creating a scan, defining that workspace. Um, we've got plenty of other sessions on this topic, so I'd really encourage you to go back and watch some of our on-demand sessions at sessions.shapertools.com. Calculating. There we go. There we go. That's my workspace. Pop mm -hmm. into import. Okay. We better get back to that origin cam. Oh, goosey. There we go. Here, we're on. We're All on. Right. And there we go. Right oh, there. you know what? I forgot to rotate it. That's okay. You'll rotate it? I can rotate it here. Okay. If I rotate it on here, it'll automatically sync to your origin so you don't have to rotate it. That's true. But it's easy enough to do. So we'll just rotate that 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to spill the beans, Jake, which is that we already cut most of this. It's a kitchen show. It's a cooking show. We, exactly. we pre-work some of this uh, so that you don't have to sit here and watch us cut this. Um but the reason that I bring that up now is that it's important to cut the correct side. Yes. Right? Yes. Do you remember which side you cut? Because I don't. I do. Okay. We've got it right over here. That's like triple check worthy because we want to put this together at the end of the show. Yep. Okay. All right. We're good to go. And we're cutting this with that five millimeter O-flute router bit, by the way. And Jake, uh, before the show, you cut this the whole half inch in one pass. We're going to try that again. Which, you know, trying to keep it fast here. Yeah, yeah, trying to keep it fast. All right, I'm going to step away for a little bit so the noise isn't overbearing, and Jake's going to cut that out. All right. So if you're new to Shaper Origin, I'll give you just a quick explainer here. It's a handheld CNC router. Shorthand there is autocorrect for your hands. Uh, so Jake's pocketing out, it looks like, these saw uh, mortises, we'll call them, for lack of a better word. Uh, no? I got a shake of the head. Oh, okay, right. We're cutting the side, not the top. So Jake's cutting out that side, and you'll notice that uh, as he pockets that out and does an inside cut there, the router bit is going to, on the pocketing cut, just come up to the line and not allow you to pass past the line. And on these online cuts like Jake's doing now, or I should say it's an outside cut which is going up to the template line that we defined in studio of this French cleat part, uh, Origin is going to follow the line and make fine-tuned corrections in real time for any small error that you as the person driving the router introduce to the system. Um, so that autocorrect in real time is going to give you a perfect line-on-line -line fit. We use this for beautiful mortise and tenon joinery, box joints, um, even flat pack style stuff like this, uh, French cleats. And the offset that, Jake, that Jake's using right now is going to allow him to move just a little bit faster, remove more material more quickly, um, although he might get a little more jitter in that cut. And now coming back with this finishing pass, he's going to have very little resistance that allows him and the router to work together much more smoothly and really dial in that perfect line-on-line -line finish and line-on-line uh, -line fit in the case of joinery, which is 
really uh, go back and watch some of our joinery sessions. We've got sessions on box joints. We've got sessions on mortise and tenon. I think the most impressive fits that we get are in inlays. So uh, check out the ship rock inlay session that we did with Ramon Valdez. Really cool stuff that you can do with the uh, handheld CNC router, getting these shapes to just fit perfectly together, even no matter how complex they are. Reminder also, please ask questions. We're here live to answer them. Drop those in the chat with Ted and he'll forward those to us at the end of the show. Uh, and also enter to win a giveaway. Today we're giving away a one-year Shaper Studio subscription and we're giving away one of these 5mm O-flute router bits and corresponding 8mm collets that you use for that. All right, stepping back on stage here. How'd that turn out, Jake? Perfect. All right, quick little sand. Beautiful. Pry bar. Pry bar. Oh, you put a lot of double-sided tape. Yeah, it's live, you know. Can never be too careful. When your guys go in full half-inch depth cuts. Yeah, you know. true. There we go. Bingo. That felt great. I was like, uh, towards a certain part of it, I felt some resistance. I was, just, I just had my chair on the cord. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that happens. And the beauty of this double-sided tape, I know we're slinging the one-inch double-sided tape now, but you can see how firmly that part was held down. And as I peel this off of the wood, you've got no residue, no tear out, none of that nonsense. So it's really the best balance of tape. And we've tested a lot of tapes. Yeah. Um, I have the pleasure of knowing what a really bad tape is like. I don't wish that on any of you. So you spend enough time in just, the CNC uh, world too. You're gonna you're gonna figure out what's. Yeah, you'll figure out what works. All right. Okay. So we've got those two parts. We've got a right and a left. Good job. We've got a top. Okay, and what we like to do for quick and easy stuff like this, um, it's pretty simple joinery. We'll just do a little bit of wood glue, and this might be fine woodworking heresy here, but we brought the brad nailer today, so we're just going to tack it together. It's shop furniture. Yeah, it's shop furniture, exactly. We could do, <laughs> next cleat we're going to do uh, a full mortise and tenon yeah. set up on. that would be a fun show. I'm going to grab some brad nails. Okay, are we out? So while Jake's doing that, I will, uh, let's go back into studio over here. I am going to start a new design, and I'm just going to show you how I could remix that file that I just used to make a new cleat. So let's call this screwdriver cleat. Okay, perfect. Now here's where the beauty of that file import comes in. I'm going to import from my files pull saw cleat that drops that design right in there and I'm gonna place place these parts separately just zoom me in there that's okay and uh, what I could do is I could build a whole new cleat based off of these cleat sides or for example I could take this and you know I might want to get rid of these rounded rectangles um, I could, you know, delete this whole thing and I could drop in a new rectangle. Let's call that just two inches wide and 10 inches long. So that's going to fit my rabbit perfectly. Put that there to illustrate that. And then what I could do for screwdrivers is I could take a bunch of circles. Let's make those a half inch diameter. So it's easy to find, but my screwdriver doesn't fall through. I can take that, let's click that so you can drag it. I can drag that and place. And I can duplicate and place. And I can duplicate and place. Jake, I hear something fun's going on over there. Yeah, sorry, was I supposed to wait? No, not at <laughs> all. I think that's just more exciting than uh, duplicating and placing circles. Yeah, just a little bit of wood glue there. Just enough. I mean, it's not going to... If we're if I was making a cleat that was holding like a whole stack of clamps, yeah, probably think a little bit more about 
what's going to hold this thing together. Well, we're in San Francisco, so it's got to be earthquake proof. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you don't, funny don't enough. Don't want your nice pull saws coming off the cleat wall. Um, there is a reason for this little undercut. Mm-hmm. Because once it's on the cleat wall, mm -hmm. you can measure that dimension from the bottom of your cleat to this and cut a piece of stock to slip in there. And then mm -hmm. it actually won't come off the wall. Mm -hmm. Like a tusked tenon, if you will, almost. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Voila. Cool. So we got A and B right here. Pretty solid, I'll say. Let's out with the old, in with the new. I think our walls are different dimensions. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this just goes right like, uh, yeah, they literally are, huh? What's going on there? Did you do different offsets, Jake? No. Are you sure? Yes. You know, I probably designed this different <laughs> as I did it the second time <laughs> because we cut this before the show. Uh huh. And then I didn't make this slot the same dimension. You gotta have the slide of hand where you actually use the oh, one we built before, yeah, but you make know, it look right? like. <laughs> I wasn't clever enough with that. So I wrote down 90% of the dimensions. That's what I get for freestyle in one of them. But, uh, you know, if you're doing both of those slots at the same time, it is identical in the file, actually. It's just that we cut it twice with two different files. Yep. So chalk that one up to a live show, folks. We're live. <laughs> We're live. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that we wanted to cover? I'm looking over at our whiteboard here. Uh, we got importing. We got remixing files. Can we, we just also recognize DXF import? We can recognize DXF like, import. That's huge. There's, you know, people we out don't there. have an example today. We don't have an example. We should but, do a show on that. But there's plenty of people that are like, hey, I use X program or AutoCAD. AutoCAD, and I can only get a DXF out of it. Mm -hmm. How do I get an SVG from a DXF? Mm -hmm. Well, there was a couple different ways you could do it, but now you have a Shaper-sponsored way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, super good if you work in a different CAD program. Also super good for getting data from hardware manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So we have the hardware catalog that we're constantly updating and providing these Shaper-verified cut files to you for a lot of common hardware that's out there. And we've got about 150 pieces of hardware in there so far, but there's far more than 150 pieces of hardware out there in the world. And so uh, a lot of these hardware manufacturers will provide their files in the form of a DXF for making CNC templates or for giving you those dimensions for installation. So if you're working with furniture connectors and you have a DXF from the hardware manufacturer themselves, you can just drop that DXF into Shaper Studio, program it and plan, plan your cuts, review it, make sure that it looks right, send it to origin, and you're ready to go. Pop quiz, what is DXF stand for? I have no idea. Me I think neither. The, the X is for exchange. That's so my guess. Digital exchange file? Drawing exchange format. File. Scalable, ve scalable vector <laughs> graphics all day long here. Yeah, that's an easy one. Um, I think... Drawing exchange format this says the drawing goose. exchange format. Was I right? Yeah. Boy, I just thought you would I should have bet you a Snickers on that one. <laughs> All right. I think that's the show for today. Hang on for the Q&A. If you're watching this on demand, join us live next time for Shaper Sessions. Uh, and watch more Shaper Sessions on demand live at sessions.shapertools.com. Thanks. Cheers.